Hello everyone and welcome to the first race of the second season of the Classic Day Championship. Hello and welcome. If you are watching, it's very possible that you have seen these people race here before. I still have a rather small grid for now. Hopefully that will increase fairly soon. We do have some very recognizable names from previous season. Previous season, of course, we drive in the Porsche with your 74 RSR. Something like that. Today we are driving in the BMW Pro Car and we are watching Schwarzfahrer absolutely throw it around the track of Bathurst. If you are very familiar with Bathurst, you will notice that this is not, maybe not as you recognize it. There's a couple of runoffs missing and everything. The track is largely the same, but uh, there's a chicane missing in the end, though. That's a pretty big deal. This is an old version of Bathurst. I believe it's like a couple of years ago. In a moment, I will find out because I will show you the calendar right after this lap is finished. Oh, and he takes so much risk. Goes on the grass and uh, tilts his car up a little bit, but he is okay. It's a very difficult section to go downhill there, but we will watch on board. We'll commentate over that in a couple of minutes, likely that as the first lap of qualifying. For now, we have five races, and somebody who is named race director, I assume they are doing their own German language stream. And oh, there you go. We have six drivers now. Sleepy has just joined us. Yeah, that is far, far across the line, improving his time and his position to go ahead of G-Foil. Now, where to introduce the drivers? I feel like there's no better driver to start with than Mick Schleifer, dominant last season. I was a really big fan of the Porsche. Let's see if this season and that affection for old cars carries over to the BMW Pro Car. He's a very talented driver uh, in any case, really. I've not really seen him do open wheelers, but any other car, definitely a force to be reckoned with. We've got Wojciech, pretty solid uh, last time around. Uh, in terms of pace, was always up there, always fighting, but sometimes some incidents, some unclean moments uh, harmed his championship chances and maybe this season maybe the car suits him a little bit better and maybe he will get better results I will be hoping for that Cafalo of course one of the organizers also joining us today very beautiful uh, white and black livery uh, last season I believe it finished around the midfield as well uh, a bit more consistent not always up there with pace consistency so you can get to a decent amount of uh, decent amount of points in the championship then we have Charles Farr is not driving currently but he is also one of the organizers uh, finish right around what Cavalo was had a good season as well and again very consistent driver quite good in pace as well and maybe this season will come together just a little better for a better position in the championship. We have mixed life is setting a time. He's only third, so maybe not as dominant. Who's to say? It's only his first lap, and I think Wojciech has had a couple. We've got Slippy. Now, Slippy is not much of a known quantity to me. I will very quickly look at the results of the previous championship, if you don't mind. I don't see him on there, not under the name Slippy anyway, so who knows, we'll see, I think he might be very uh, very new, so unknown quantity there, then we've got G-Foil who is around this pack, there he is in that car right there, uh, no name from uh, last season, I believe he only joined one race though, uh, did not finish that one unfortunately. Uh, he's here again today and maybe we'll see him more this season perhaps even uh, some decent results he was a bit nervous about joining today it's uh, a bit challenging of a track he felt like the uh, downhill 
would lose too much time. We're happy to have him regardless. And keep in mind that the downhill is challenging for him, but uh, for a lot of other people too, that is such a difficult section to get right. And uh, we'll look at that during the qualifying session as well. Now, we don't have much else. We do see the car ghosting again, and that is because a driver behind. Will it be the driver behind? One of the drivers, I think it was Slippy. Yeah, Slippy was not in the lobby yet when G Foil was driving. As he never returned to pits, the car is not physical for him. Great view video game. Uh, anyway, see here the car being a little bit down, just a little bit battered. If he is the only driver still really driving, Cavalor. And I think he's going to pull over. Yes, there we go. Just to advance the session and not make people wait. It is quite a long lap. Two minutes in total. So very good from him. Mixlifer did improve to set the second best time. And Wojciech is still fastest, fastest so far. Despite being worried about his pace. Actually only two seconds behind. Now over a lap, over a whole race. That will be a lot. But... Uh, he was uh, expecting like 5 seconds, 6 seconds, so we are happy to see that. Actually, am I right or am I just talking out of my uh, behind? Uh, <laughs> except 4 seconds, okay. Alright. So, I uh, don't see anyone driving out quite yet. Quickly clicking through the drivers. Oh, we've got someone. Might actually be Cavalor, yes. And if it is Cavalor driving out first, then we will go with him on board. I will hide the overview because I don't like it. And the map will be shown. You'll see where people are. There's no, like, visuals of who is who, unfortunately. But uh, this is the best we have for right now. That's what we'll have to do with. On the roof, maybe that's not the nicest, of course. The nicest would be on... No, that's not on board at all. Um, cockpit, there you go. Excuse me. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done this, so... A bit unfamiliar with the controls, not knowing what an onboard is, I guess. I would argue that the game doesn't know what an onboard is. Um, but you know. It's, uh, it is what it is. Cockpit view then. Here you can see the first example, this downhill. You don't see anything. As soon as you see something, you realise it should have been turning to the right and the left. You have to break again for a tighter right. And an even tighter left. And again, you'll be offline for another side of a right. And then these corners are fairly easily doable, but then you get flung downhill into a braking zone. A long, tight left hander. And you want a good exit for a very long straight. In fact, the longest straight on this track. And in recent times, they have added a chicane. Still quite a nice chicane, actually. Quite big, quite flowing. Uh, on entry and exit. But uh, they didn't have that back in the day. And this is what it would look like. Also, back in the day, you would have the driver stand terrifyingly close to the cars with not much in between them and the car. That has been improved in years. As the sun points into Cavalor's eyes, he will start his lap Breaking for turn one, it is a 90 degrees corner towards the left. Try to get a good exit because you are going on a very long straight. And that is only the first really long straight. The second one is, looked visually on the map almost twice as long. It's uh, crazy long. You want to break, kill just enough speed to get you turned in for this corner. It's early on the power though. You 
kind of want to carry as much as you can. Very nice corner that, and this is a hairpin uphill where you kind of have to be in the right gear just to get the car going nicely. Car will struggle if it doesn't have too much power, but there it goes. And then here, a lot of cars, this is basically uh, pedal to the metal, you want to accelerate as much as you can, or as much speed through the corners as you can. This car is a little bit grip limited, so small lift-offs here and there. And through this corner, there is a gravel runoff nowadays. Not here, and we go downhill, first right, then left, and then right again. You have to kill so much speed to make this uh, well, otherwise you will simply lose control and go into the wall. Avalor keeps the car nicely under control. Breaking for the last corner, you want to be early on, e on exit, but early on the power on exit, but not too early because you will be understeering into the wall. Avalor finds a nice balance and goes onto the longest straight off the track. And there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of time here to think about things. Uh, last race we did was, of course, on the North Slifer where you had an even longer straight. This one does give you enough time to at least decide what's for dinner. A good braking zone at a car. Not spectacular on the brakes, so you have to be early there. Turn in nicely and get on the power capital away. 2 minutes 7 sets the pace. Uh, McSlifer is still in the pits. Halfway, I've got uh, the crow. I'm gonna call him joining us. And uh, G4 sets the second fastest time a two minute nine. If somebody else finishing their lap, it's not slippy, it is a Wujek on the long straight. I assume he's finishing his lap, and if he is not, then uh, we'll see what the others are doing. Very cool drift. I'm not sure if it's faster. But I will give style points. I don't think they count for the championship, but that is brilliant. And that is a 2 minutes 7.0. An improvement over Cavalo by about 2 tenths. So what P1 for now. And we've got uh, the Crow. He's still in the pit, or he's just put himself back into the pits. His Fast Fire and Slippy are still driving. Quickly go into the cockpit. Fast far and we can see Slippy ahead. No, Slipstream is nice. I don't think these cars are too aero uh, dependent. So the downforce loss will be virtually non existent. It could still disturb the car, however, in very s specific situations. You really need every ounce of whatever the air does. We don't need that so much. And a very long straight and Slippy will be setting their lap time first. Also driving right behind Cavalo who is finishing his second lap. So we'll see his time pop up first, if it is an improvement. If it's not, it will simply stay the same. Now a very ooh, wide drift goes into the grass. We saw Wujek do this earlier, but he improved his time, uh, or improved Kafalo's time, uh, so to say. If he maybe went off too far and invalidated. And then we've got right behind, who uh, I think also uh, either invalidated his lap time or... Yeah, see nothing anyway. We do have Metals in VR joining us again here today. Is uh, of fourth on the list, but uh, not really positioned yet because he hasn't set a time. Looks so many. Crow starting his lap does already have damage, and I do think I'm not actually sure if this league uh, runs damage anymore. It'll be visual only, but judging by how the car looks, uh, maybe uh, <laughs> how it moves, maybe it's a bit more severe than that. Decides to go through it anyway. Go through with it. I'll check in a moment how it is. <coughs> well, it's, it's I, I am getting clues that it's maybe not so great to drive right now. Regardless, we have Mixlifer uh, either finishing his first lap or about to start it. 
I see him wiggle a little bit to break. Is that something that the drivers will start doing more as they get used to this? Is, is this the way you have to drive the car? Or is he just a battling damage? What is going on? Let's see on board. You might be battling a tiny bit of damage. We can see a couple of dents in the car. Hopefully nothing too severe and hopefully he can still finish his run. Quickly, uh, excuse myself as I uh, fix some things. Hopefully that should do as I want it to be. Right, Mixed life then on the hill. Oh, and that's a big drift. He really goes for that. Not sure if it is faster, but uh, I guess we'll see in the, the time what comes out of it. <laughs> it looks like uh, visually he's driving his car with one hand drifting all over the place. Now, that is not how he's sitting in the sim rig right now. That is a very intense uh, driving push he must be having through these corners, ascending even more than we have seen so far from uh, whoever we followed downhill so far. Mixlife is committed to make this lap be one of the fastest on the list. Careful to the last corner though, as you will need to be. We do see the car vibrating a little bit. My rotational axis, I think that is just the way the game is. Nothing we can do about that for now, I'm afraid. Breaks for the last corner, goes through it again. A little bit of drift, but no grass touched. Goes to the top of the timing tables by almost a second. Mixlifer shows us what he is made of, that he is a champion for a reason that he is here to extend his reign in the Classic Day Championship. Wojciech has also improved his time, goes to second place. Still half a second behind a mixed life. A pretty good time for him anyway. Cafalo then, can Cafalo make a dent in this huge lead that Big Slifer seems to be enjoying right now? He does make a dent, but it's not enough. It's also not enough to beat the Wujek, but it's not that far away. So there is still time for him to finish his lap and start another one. So no harm, no, no foul there. But the Crow still a damaged car. Hopefully it's nothing too bad. I do notice. <laughs> it makes sense, but it looks a little bit silly on the camera. Uh, those lights, they need to be there, because uh, otherwise it becomes dangerous, right? Um, so they don't deform. I think if we go to a roof cam, we can... Ah, no, we can't see. That is unfortunate. But I seem to just kind of be hovering there. Uh, bonnet, we also can't see anything. But uh, we can probably see more than... Uh, another from the cockpit. It is still fine. Ooh, and he doesn't break in time, and as a result, he takes to the escape road. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, that will not be a good lap time. He will still have to continue driving, though, because uh, it's the only chance he's going to get for a decent lap time. Have to break early for the last corner, though. Still has this lap and maybe another one to figure it out. If he has set a lap time, but it's not particularly competitive. And he doesn't have much time to go out there again, so I, I fear that might be it for him. Far to far, same story, he's still in the pits, not moving, so likely will not be setting a better lap time than he has done. The Crow is still driving, of course, we did see his car damage, and uh, it is gonna be a bit of a struggle for him I don't think he uh, quite has a feeling of this car the way people like McSlifer does and it does take time to learn these cars especially if you are used to another sim 
simulator. Uh, then Amos 2 is it's just a bit different. It's a different story and uh, Gaffalo actually, instead of fish finishing his lap, decides to practice pit entry. We have a mandatory stop as far as I know, so that is a smart thing to do if you were not going to improve regardless. Euphoil then still on his lap. 2 minutes 8.9 was his previous lap time. What is he going to do this time? Passed down the straight. These cars do look very fast from the outside. I mean, why did it take so long to break? Uh, all of that speed needs to go somewhere and these cars are not masters of turning. That does, however, make it very interesting for the race because drivers can try to outbreak themselves. Decent improvement, half a second for you for there. Uh, not quite in contention for a fourth place on the grid. Regardless, decent time from him. Now, Mixlife is about to finish his lap time. I believe the crow is behind him, or that is Metal Sim. And I hope for Metal Sim that that is Metal Sim. He hasn't lap time yet, but Mixlife did not improve this time. Wojciech is close behind now. And the crow finally finishes his lap. And uh, a 2 minutes 7 fourth place on the standings between Cavalo and Stratfire. Tends to be a narrow section there, Stratfire. I don't think set his bat best lap time. So he will have to overtake the crow and fight Cavalo. And Metal Sim VR still driving. I'm not sure if this lap counts. Maybe he started a little bit too late. But the crow and McSlifer will still have time to set on the lap. So let's see what happens, Metal Sim. Anyway, on to the last long straight. All he has to do is a corner and half a straight. And then he will maybe improve. Uh, do I say improve? It's Metal Sim. He hasn't set the time yet. He will definitely improve as long as his lap isn't invalidated. through the last corner you can hear the car brake try to downshift and brake on the engine as well it's a little bit wide there maybe it's just still fine for the lap to be valid across the line where does he end up uh nowhere i don't think the lap counted i don't think he uh, had a finished out lap so yeah maybe it wouldn't count anyway see the Ooh, and the crow has a little bit of a touch on the wall there. That is damage that will build up. So, perhaps... It's just not to be... Mixed life is still for a glory run. He has already got pole position in the pocket. He will still finish his lap. Maybe even improve to rub salt in all of the wounds. There we go. A 2 minutes 5.891. Brilliant lap from Mixlifer. Very nicely done. The pull position for him and Wujek drove out. I don't know why the qualifying is still going. Normally it should end once everybody has finished. Could be because somebody was in the pits but not lost. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, at some point, the session is going to continue. Gives us a little bit of time to look at the championship table. I said championship table. It is a, the race calendar, which is something completely different. You can see today is the Bathurst race. And every two weeks we'll have a race, as last time. We've got Kilami, uh, Daytona, Estoril will be on the calendar for round four. Got Silston, Hockenheim, Monza, and Nordschleife. Hopefully, the old Nordschleife. Um, it's not out yet. We're expecting it to be out uh, before the last race. And it's a night race today. But let's quickly get off this table. Uh, put all of these in your calendar. I will be here to stream presumably every single one of those. Might be one or two that I'm not able to, but trying to provide you with all of the races as best as I can so back to the race then 
So our grid, who do we have? We have mixed life on pole position. Usual suspect for that position. Then we've got Wojciech following him closely. Very nice second place qualifying for him. Cavalo in P3 followed by the Crow and Schwarzfahrer right behind. We've got G4 in P6. Might even be happy with that. Slippy in P7. Metal Sim VR is in P8. Did not manage to set a lap time. Uh, but we will surely see him move up the grid as soon as the lights go out. And Race Director is not driving, I assume. Uh, he might be. Honestly, uh, he might say, it is only eight people. Um, let's make myself a ninth. He's on the grid right now. But um, I don't expect him to be driving. A car is... Well, the car will disappear as soon as uh, this timer uh, gets to 43.0. The reason for that is that it will not press ready. Uh, the timer will continue to run until everybody has pressed ready. And if you didn't press ready, then you get disqualified immediately. Which is a nice way to do it for the game. Because that just means that you don't have cars being obstacles on a straight. Generally, the start finish is on a straight. Alright, let's see what we got then. This is the view from behind. See the race director removed immediately. Mixlifer from pole position. Does he have a good start? Oh, Mixlifer has missed the start and not by a little bit. Cavalo had to take avoiding action and he does get past Mixlifer. Uh, this, uh, the crow is also right there around the outside of Mixlifer and Mixlifer all the way back to fourth. Wojciech takes the lead. Uh, Metal Sim VR has a very good launch from P8 straight up to P4. Mixlifer drops another position behind him. Slippy in P6, uh, six, taking some pressure from Schwarzfahrer. And G4 is a little bit behind. Also taking it a little bit safely through there. Schwarzfahrer in P7, however. Cavalo is a fighting of Metal Sim and the crowd. Me uh, Metal Sim already uh, having been passed by, uh, or having passed uh, the crowd. Very quick work from him, but he misses the corner entirely, and Metal Sim has to concede uh, the position back. Ooh, I'm not sure if the Crow sees him, but he does have the position, so Metal Sim technically back out. Mixlifer in P5, though, and that makes the race exciting, because he will surely... Oh, but there is a mistake by the Crow, and Metal Sim has to take avoiding action, goes into the wall, and Mixlifer passes cleanly, Slippy and Schwarzfahrer also, and... Metal Sim VR and the Crow have taken some damage, I assume. That's for sure. That car is battered. Doesn't even have any lights anymore. The Crow is still driving with lights. Wojciech about a second away now from Cavalo, who has a decent gap behind him towards Mixlifer, but nobody to fill that gap. And that can be difficult, actually, for Cavalo, because there's nobody to slow Mixlifer down. And that is never a welcome sight. Oh, but Mixlifer may slow Mixlifer down and Slippy immediately takes advantage of a very small mistake there. Uh, Cavalo also taking advantage from the mistake of Wojciech and takes the lead of the race. Wojciech has seen not so much of what has happened behind him, but Cavalo uh, taking perfect advantage from everything that happened. And uh, P1 it is for him very impressive. Oh, but breaking for that corner is so difficult. See immediately that uh, entries and exits with this car will make a huge difference, not just for this race, although especially for this race because the braking zones are so long and uh, tricky. But uh, in every race, that might be something we will see. Uh, if we look down the grid, the, grab, the gaps have grown a little bit. Metal Sim VR has already retired, unfortunately. Completely understandable, though. It was a huge, huge crash for him. The foil has immediately stopped and uh, fixed everything. Means he will not have to pit anymore. Everybody else will have to. Foil still in the lead, and Wojciech right behind. Now, what does one see from the cockpit? Now, Wojciech will see a little bit more than other people from the cockpit. Uh, that is simply the way it is. Because uh, of the driver ahead. Not only is the driver visible by virtue of the rear lights, also the lights ahead of him shining a little bit of a beacon. That 
Cuffalo cannot enjoy from other drivers. Oh, but Wojciech makes a mistake, trying to take the corner a little bit too tight. There's a concrete wall right there to push you wide. But he saves it. No further damage. Maybe a little bit of paint removed. Maybe that saves him some weight. Maybe he's faster now. Of course, not really how it works. Now... Wojciech will be chasing Cavalo. Cavalo has such a good exit over the last corner. Wojciech, unfortunately, not being able to keep up there. Slippy, though. Not only is he able to keep up with Cavalo, he's faster than Cavalo, and that means he's much faster than Wojciech. In fact, so much faster that we might be seeing an overtake before this straight ends. It is so long. A small difference in exit can be exaggerated a lot. Just because of how long the straight is and how much time you have to benefit from a kilometer extra on your dial. On your speedometer, I should say. But it's just not enough. Slippy has to settle for third. Four right now. But just one more mistake by Wojciech and that small gap will invert. Uh, and I think we've already seen that Wojciech had a scruffy exit and Slippy is right past. Very impressive pace from a 2.06 last lap. That is faster than Cavalo, in fact, and faster than anybody else on track. Xlife is second fastest, though, and that does mean that he catches up to the lead pack. And we will soon see him in that battle for the lead. Not far with a little bit of a gap behind the top pack. And the crow in P6 after that mistake early in the race. P4 has already stopped, but the time is not entirely representative. In fact, the lap time is not entirely representative because it will uh, his pit exit will uh, also been have been taken into account. That lap time will be added up. They didn't remove it after. We have a great idea of where he is in terms of lap time for me. Now, from the roof then of Mixlifer, we can see a Wojciech who has had a good qualifying lap uh, to go into P2. <clears throat> Unfortunately for him, it's not really translating in race pace. Struggling a little bit with the exits with this car. However, this time he seems to have nailed it. In fact, somebody else who seems to have nailed everything is a Slippy who uh, moves himself all the way up to P1. Incredible pace from him. And uh, it's it's immediately showing in terms of, uh, well, simply position. And uh, if he keeps this pace up, if he uh, if this pace is consistent, then we may have a very poor race at the top. Not courtesy of Big Slifer this time, who has a who has had a terrible start, uh, missing the start in fact by. I think like a second, unfortunately. But uh, back up there, back fighting. It's got good pace. Hopefully that translates in good positions in the end. Take with a 205 last lap. That is incredible. In fact, I think that lap might be faster than what Big Slife is at in qualifying. Which is extremely impressive. Now, Mixlifer will be right behind Wojciech. And you can see Wojciech not quite super comfortable with this uh, car on the grass a couple of times. Won't harm him too much, but that will hit a wood. If it wasn't for this corner, which makes overtaking completely impossible, to be honest. It is simply too risky to try. I'm not sure if anybody has tried it in real life and uh, survived it till the tail. Of course, racing these days is a very safe uh, compared to uh, back in the day. So probably somebody has physically survived. But it's very easy to take damage there. It's very easy to ruin your race, to in, in fact entirely retire from the race. Um, I'm sure that would be what normally happens if you try 
over in P4 still. Not really catching up to Wojciech. I think Wojciech had a slightly better exit this time around. And that will be what makes the difference on this track. Simply the last corner, well, the second to last corner, exit. Because it just carries on for so long. As Wojciech, uh, as I was uh, talking there, overtakes Kafalo. Kafalo with not a very good exit from the last corner. Wojciech straight past. Slippy with a 253. That is ridiculous. Let's quickly see what he is doing there. Because that is, um, quite frankly, insane. Apps like that should simply not be legal. Let's see if it is. Up the hill, uh, probably is, to be honest. A game would punish you if you didn't uh, drive correctly within the white lines. Very simply be a case of more confidence. But it looks fairly smooth. Uh, Will is jittering a little bit. But listen to the engine. It, it almost sounds like a Sunday drive. Nothing too crazy. It just seems to have very, very clean control over the car. Maximizing the grip. As well as the traction. Cypher is seeing. Avaloy and Wojciech ahead of him. Does he have a better exit this time though? That is what's going to make a difference. The answer is... Not really. In fact, I think Cafalo uh, is looking at overtaking Wojciech on the inside. Is that going to be possible? Breaking zone. It's very difficult to overtake in this breaking zone just like that. Wojciech leaves just enough space and has simply a better exit. That might mean, though, that Mick Slifer is able to overtake with a better exit. He's got a 2 minutes 8, 1, 1, 1 on the board. Ooh, and Cavalo makes a decently big mistake there on the exit. A big tank slapper, it looked like. Keeps going on the throw, however, but it cannot be fast. Mick Slifer is slightly faster looking on the inside for this corner. To go on the brakes, Gaffalo tries to cover it off, but Mixlife is right there already. And he goes past on the inside. Very nice overtake. And Mixlife moves up onto the podium. A little bit of a drift, but uh, keeps the pace for the corner. Ujek has lost touch to Slippy. Um, and the camera has lost touch a little bit of uh, Wojciech, but there we go. Uh, he's back and we can see Mick Slifer giving chase. A floor right behind. Really big drift from Wojciech there out of the last corner, trying to get as much speed on exit. And I think McSlifer may not have the best exit there. Uh, it's definitely not, but I'm not sure if Kaflo is that much better. Would need a lot to uh, to overtake uh, McSlifer, and I don't think it is a lot. We will see. He might close up at the breaking zone, being virtue uh, by virtue of having more speed by that point. Slipstream is strong though, and he actually pulls alongside. Makes life for then. He's getting overtaken again. Yes, Cavalo on the inside closes it out, but Makes life with a beautiful switchback. Cavalo outbreaking himself slightly. Makes life does not concede third place, and he is relegated. Cavalo uh, is relegated back to P4. We'll have to try the same thing again. So I'm staying ahead. Ujek does benefit from that, and. Uh, a little bit of a bigger gap behind him. The 
race so far then. Got Slippy. Showing us what Mixlifer showed us last season. Dominant performance at the front. Which as uh, Mixlifer loved the Porsche. And we've got a BMW Enjoyer in Slippy. And he is so smooth with it. In fact, I think, I suspect that some drivers may see either this race replay, uh, this stream after the fact, or simply watch the in-game save replay, just to see how he drives this car and try to replicate it. As a result, I do think we'll see people improve across the season. The gap we see now might not be as big later. Maybe there's even setup tricks? Who knows? I'm not sure how much setup you can do with this car. I haven't driven it. Could probably try that before next time. A 2 minute 5.3. This is the second time we've seen it this race, but it is no less impressive the second time. That is incredible pace. We have passed the first third of the race. You may have noticed these races are a little bit longer and normally the race would be halfway done by now. We have 30 more minutes which is a full race distance in the previous season. Pro goes into the bits. That's a little bit of damage it seems. And uh, it's... Ooh. Trying to fix it, but I think he missed his piss box. Oh, we see a mistake from G-Foil. Well, I think he's uh, had a, a rough day so far. This is a very tough track, and mistakes do get punished with damage. You see it right there on his car. Now, Tratar in a world of his own. Hasn't really made any major mistakes, I think, just from his car still intact, so... There he is, still there. Very good. Cavalo will be giving chase to Mixlife and Wujek. I think this battle for second is where we will have our eyes for most of this race. These three just seem very, very close to each other. And I get the feeling watching them that they are still figuring out just how the car works, uh, especially on this track. Um, this is not a. <laughs> if you're looking for a test track, I don't think the uh, uh, Bathurst is it. So I think it will be very much a track car combination that they are figuring out as they go. In race conditions, even with slipstream, outbreaking one another, things like that. Looking at those things. And these cars just have very different characteristics what we are used to with the Porsche. I think Mixlife made a bit of a mistake there. Is it enough capital to catch up? I don't think it was that big of a mistake, but he did lose a little bit there. Wojciech, I think, just got out a little bit better, but it's not really translating in lap time. Slippy again with a 2 minutes 5.5. Uh, what a madman. Simply. Mick Schleifer is a decent pace, 2 minutes 7.6, so that is behind Wojciech. Might be slowed down a little bit by that. And Wojciech, only 2 minutes 8.5, where makes a bit of a mistake, goes wide there. Does mean he gets a slightly better speed out of here, by virtue of being able to accelerate for a little bit longer. But, simply not a straight so you can do not benefit as much as you could elsewhere. Mix Life is still on his tail. On the inside there's nothing there unfortunately. X 
Brexit will determine a lot of these battles. But now, Jack has the upper hand on this trade. Just a little bit. Wixlifer does have slipstream though, and we can see the slipstream on this car work. Just a little bit. I don't know why Wixlifer is slowing down here. That is interesting. What is going on there? I think Cavalo is also uh, catching up. Is there a an ERS system, a push to pass boost system that we are looking at here? That is what's going on with these cars. I'm not sure if I, elsewhere I can find. Something specific about this car, but it does confirm that there is damage from these cars. Medium levels of damage. Entire way and fuel are accelerated. Quite a lot. There's also the monetary pits off, which has already been served by EFOIL, and uh, the crow is also serving it right now. Driver very close though, behind Wujek. You can practically smell the second, pla uh, second place. Not quite fast enough to take it outright. Not on the hill anyway, and that is very difficult regardless, so we do not blame him. him. Very unlikely anyone would try anything there. It's simply too difficult. Then on exit you do see that Wujak has a Sperry exit. It is visually quite obvious. Be more speed out of there. Let's see what Mixed Life it does. Maybe that they have like a boost every, once every two laps. You see him out of much speed here. We see Wujek have something extra, and I don't know what that is. It looks like a, uh, a boost system, and we just see Cavalo just shoot by and make Schleifer, uh, I think. Oh, and there's a big mistake from Wujek. Big slip, but he was going into the pits. That was, um, I'm not sure if it's planned, but it wasn't that bad of, uh, of an issue. I'm curious to see, does Big Schleifer simply boost pass as on this straight? Also, Slippy is in the pits as well. There's E1 and P2 in. It's simply responding then to Slippy, and Svartfire is also in. Slippy already on the move, however. Slipher right behind Cathalor. Hasn't boosted past on the, the straight. I think it's very possible that after the race we'll see a message pop up in the Discord uh, where we host these things uh, saying that uh, Mixlife forgot to bind his uh, push the pass button. I think it's possible. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't know why everybody's getting a boost on that long strike and Mixlife isn't. But I think that is the most likely explanation. So it's entirely possible, isn't it? Uh, we're not that professional of drivers. Cars we like, whatever we like. Also, be a strategical thing. There are some cars that have a turbo or a push to pass system, however, uh, some can only be used a number of times. Oh, and there's a big mistake for Cavalor hitting the grass there, and just like that, Big Slifer is passed, takes the provisional lead of the race, but hasn't made his mandatory stop yet. So that is entirely virtual for now. And uh, we do see uh, a Cavalo boost straight past. So yeah, I think there is something going on with a sort of push pass system as Big Slife uh, into the bits. 
definitely is in the lead then. Up to Slippy is temporary at best, to be honest. Uh, Slippy has shown to be the class of the field today. Unless he made a mistake with the pits. We'll very likely see him retake that uh, after Kaflu goes in. What I do find it interesting, it seems, and uh, the game is not very reliable with this, but the, I see tyres next to the, the car. The, all of the stops have taken a little while. I think the vast majority of drivers are choosing to uh, refuel a lot and also change tyres. That is interesting for sure. Now what's also interesting to me is that Wojciech seems to have lost a lot of time. He was second, remember, but now a big slide with everybody having stopped except for Cavalo. He's currently in fifth. What happened? He made a mistake in the pits. Maybe he pulled too much. Maybe he missed his pit box. Uh, didn't enter correctly. We did see a small mistake on the entry, but that would not account for the full lose 20 seconds something crazy like that not quite 20 but he lost a lot of time made a mistake right after also possible we had some damage to repair got to turn it off so which we'll quite far behind is trying to catch up with fast power as it stands. I feel like people will criticize me, uh, especially for community, if I start to pronounce German names as if I am English. Which I'm not, I'm Dutch. But, uh, I am speaking English, there's a fixed English accent and I do not let go. Buffalo in the pits then. Sleepy is about to overtake, Kaflo is still not moving, no, Slippy back into the lead of the race, but basically where he belongs. And uh, with 18 minutes to go, it will take a big mistake or a, a large Siri, series of errors for anyone to be able to challenge him. Mixlife currently in third, is he overtaking Kaflo? Kaflo is coming out of the pits now, but Mick Slifer is already ahead, while this is the inside line for Cavalo, uh, simply don't have speed. And it is also tighter, so you don't carry as much speed. Mick Slifer then in P2. That's where we'll see him a lot this season. He's still a very quick driver. Even if this is not the Porsche. We did see him make a couple of mistakes and he doesn't seem to have any boost. No mechanical issues for him. Virtually. Of course, uh, mechanical issues. They do exist. But they are disabled. So, they don't exist. But uh, if you don't have the button bound here, you can't, you can't boost if you don't have the button. As much as your car has the capability. If you, if you don't have a way to activate it, it literally doesn't matter. But that's unfortunate. So, mixed life for now, we'll have to settle with P2. And uh, we'll lose a decent amount of speed on the long, long straight. Does seem to have a better exit down. I see no slips, no drifts. Very good grip from him. Those new tyres will have that. I suspect Cavill will be catching up to him momentarily. I think better on the brakes than Slippy. Of course, that is very much not an issue. He is so far ahead. And he is even faster that way. Anyway. If 
overall remains in P3 for now. Wojciech has now finally defined him. Wojciech has now caught up Transpire. A small chance of a mistake through here but also through the uphill hairpin it's a very tricky corner because you're kind of trying to get a good exit but the line is very difficult you kind of want to go wide I would think just to be able to carry a lot of speed but also at the risk of washing wide into the wall Used to be okay though. Both drivers, Jack took a little bit more of an inside line. Doesn't seem to have harmed him too much. He is still keeping up with Schwarzfager. Bit of a drift, but he is keeping up with the driver ahead. Little bit of a drift. Oh, and he hits the grass there. The mount slows him down, and that is not going to be overtaken this time. Further down the grid, we have G Foil, who has been struggling a little bit today, but we are happy that he is here. Still in P6. We've got the crow. is as it stands in P7 uh, I say as it stands he's four minutes behind I think he had a really big repair or a series of big repairs and uh, as a result is very far behind however he's still driving and that is very respectable A lot of people give up in these circumstances. He has not. that on the camera. In fact, I want to see what Wojciech is seeing. I don't think that serves him. I'm curious how these drivers sit in these cars in the sense that are they sending it? Are they really trying to figure out how does this car even work? How am I supposed to drive it? Are they trying things out? Well, we think that might be an idea to see how we can get closer to far as far. As it stands, it's a bit of a yo-yo. It did gain a lot on that straight, just later on the brakes. And I think he had a bit of boost. Regardless of the bad exit, or the worse exit uh, compared to Schwarzwager. Continuation is relatively decent.
foil is in the bits again, I assume. Trying to repair some damage. Which is fine. Uh, actually, I'm quite happy that he's still. Assuming he's still driving. I'm happy he's still driving. Yeah, he is still driving. Uh, if he. Yeah, he might not be. Yeah, I think he is. He would disappear if he wasn't. The man woke up and disappeared. Slippy still in the lead. Yep. Pretty big. If you look on the map, actually, it is visually, in fact, quite substantial. Cypher is behind. Gaffalor. Decent gap also towards Wixlifer. And also the battle between Schwarzwag and Wojciech. They are still fighting it out. Let's see if on this straight Wojciech can make business happen. Got 10 more minutes. Make good on his errors during a pit stop. I'm not sure what happened there. So we'll get clarification of progress yet in the minutes after the race. Might not be before the end of the stream. Uh, if I do get the information that is interesting to mention, I will uh, put it in the description of the YouTube video where this whole stream will be uploaded. I'm watching right now, he didn't quite catch the beginning. Um, of course, the thoughts will be online on Twitch for a little while. I will also be uploading them to YouTube, so you can follow me there. You see a lot of the times getting close to each other. Mixed Life, Cavalos, Vatvar, and Wujek, and the Crow actually, all setting a oh, two minutes seven on the same map. Now, different gradations, uh, Cavalo definitely the fastest uh, of those drivers. And uh, Wojciech unfortunately not as fast as the others. He is catching up to Schwarzwagen this lap, so... He is dealing with a car right ahead of him. Once you get closer, sometimes you go a little bit faster. But on average, you cannot beat the average of driver ahead. Unless you overtake him. Big slide there for Mujek. He keeps going. Does seem to be a lot closer than we've seen him. Is it fast enough? Is it good enough for an overtake? Looks on the inside. We go over this crest. At some point, we're going to have to break. He's going to be the last of the two breakers. He is, and the gap is quite big. So, is he going to break in time? He has a very good control of the race. A little bit scuffed on, scuffed on exit, but he has passed Cavalo. Now, is Cavalo going to stay behind? Well, not voluntarily, of course. Uh, it's a Cavalo. Swartzfire is going to stay behind. Uh, for now, not voluntarily. Let's see if we can make something happen here. So how I do doubt it. Assuming they both used their boost. As long as he can keep up, might be good enough to make him happy. For sure. They are still close together. I do expect that as the laps continue, Jack will run away a little bit. That will be his goal. Entirely possible. And I'm not sure how strong the slipstream is. I think it's pretty decent. Let's see if you uh, use the boost that these drivers seem to have. I'm going to laugh if I found out that that's actually um, a gear. 
that uh, makes life difficult to go in. But uh, I assume it's a it's a boost that he has now. But we'll we'll see. That's far then on the long straight behind Wujek. The, the question on everyone's mind right now. He used to be chasing at about the same pace which he is driving at. No, not really gaining for now. Maybe on the braking. Break at about equal time. I think Wojciech has more confidence on the braking. That will serve him quite well. That's why he has a very good run through the corner regardless. No, not really a disaster for him. Oh, and that is a disaster for Wojciech. Misses the corner and Schwarzfar goes past. That is very unfortunate. Also, I think one of the mistakes, the type of mistakes that we do see Wojciech make sometimes, unfortunately. It's all lapses in concentration and it is difficult to keep concentrated for 45 minutes on a car like this. On a track like this, even I, th I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, you feel like, I feel like Batters is especially tiring for two reasons. Um, one, that you've got a very intense uphill downhill and a very long straight, <laughs> a series of long straights with right, uh, right hand corners in between that very easily like stop paying attention on you know what I mean and exhaustion is to be expected you see some of the marbles of the track uh, moving on their own uh, gaining life there you see uh, the girl has a foot left in the session oh and a big mistake from Fathfire down the hill no collision with the wall, but it does mean that he loses his position and Wojciech is back in the lead. He still may continue to uh, trade positions. As Slippy goes for another stop. I think he just wants to go for fast slap. I don't think fast slap is a point. I think he just wants to make a statement here. Um, he already has done this. I, he doesn't need to do this. But uh, here he is. Uh, the gap is now 7 seconds, which is still very comfortable. As we get as far as they are still battling. Uh, they cannot get away from each other because they keep making very small mistakes. Oh, I say small mistakes, that's a big one again. Wojciech makes the same mistake. Less severe this time, but that is still... A seating position to as far If you're, if you're watching this, you might not understand what, why this is happening, why Wojciech is making these, these, these mistakes. I think, and this is something I have experience in, uh, driving, uh, just racing uh, online, is if you have a driver ahead of you, you have a reference, especially if they have braking lights. You have a very good reference of kind of where you need to brake. Now, if you're a perfect driver, you don't need this reference. You look at like track references, right? But if you are behind someone in a car you don't really know, you haven't quite figured out, uh, you're going to see where they brake, and there's a good chance you're gonna copy it. You're gonna pay attention to it. You're gonna base your braking point on that. Uh, for a few reasons other than it's easy. It's also you've got slipstream. You've got lack of um, a force pushing you back. Not downforce, not pushing it down, but pushing it back. Just friction. But you kind of have to look at what they're doing. You also want to, like, maybe shape of move. If they break early, you have to break early. You gotta pay attention to it. Ooh, Swastika make makes a big mistake, and I think Wojciech is passed again. And uh, side by side they go, and I think Wojciech is now fully passed. But Swastika will be in slipstream. Will be interesting now to see how that affects his running. Yeah. If you have that reference for a long time and the reference disappear, uh, disappears, you will have to figure out again how you should be driving your car. It's crazy. It's a bit weird. 
It sounds unprofessional, but honestly, uh, if you're... Well, we are not professionals, to be clear. But, um... It's just... If you're not, like... A super good driver, a top tier driver, such an easy mistake to slip into as they enter their last lap of this battle, which are now ahead as far as far having to give chase. But meanwhile, this is a battle that has evolved. Hello, Cavalo has caught up to Mick Schleifer. Mick Schleifer has been dominant previous season in the Porsche, taking home a very well deserved championship. But Cavalo is keeping up pace with Mick Schleifer today. And in fact, he's threatening to overtake. He's been fast at the last few laps. A 2.6.5 is brilliant as a lap time during a race. Now it's his job to turn it into a position ahead of Mick's life. And there's only one place this can happen. And I fear, I fear for Mick's life that, he had, that there is a boost on this car and that he has not bound the boost bar. I really fear for him. And, um. I can't, I can't be quiet. So we can hear. What is happening with these engines? Cavalo isn't behind. I think he is catching, though. A little bit extra speed here and there, maybe? Looking around the outside, he has so much speed! And he goes past. Can he break in time for this corner? That's all he needs to do. And we'll have Vita Mix Life completely on pace. Slippy takes the win though with a <laughs> 2 minutes 5 flat. Uh, just to round it off. And Cavalo takes P2 in the race. Wujek has successfully parried another counter offensive from Strathfire. Will be taking home P4 behind Mix Life who has taken home P3. Ooh, uh, would you make a mistake? Hello, the race is not over yet. Do not listen to me. And he has, unfortunately, made a fatal error in the last corner of the race. Schwarzfar will take P4 as a result. Would you P5 and Geofoil will take home, uh, take P6 in the race. Uh, the Crow did not finish, it retired. We have Middle Sinviar also joined briefly at the start, crashed out, unfortunately. And. That is all of our drivers. What an interesting race, and what does that mean for the rest of the championship? Maybe with very good pace, is anybody going to match that? Will people figure out what the secret is there? Who knows? Anyway, that is it for me. A very good race, very interesting race. Good battles here and there. Rival day for me would be Gaffalor because it's amazing to see him beat Big Slifer like that. But Slippy is a close second. Dominance. Uh, when uh, it's not boring yet, when we'll get there if he continues this. Uh, of course, very good performance there. All this difficult track. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I have been fingered. If you are watching this on Twitch, do not forget to follow. We'll be doing this every two. Uh, well, actually, quickly, let me get championship uh, table again. We're here every two Tuesdays. Next one, Kilami in two weeks. Daytona, Estoril, Silverson, Hockenheim, Monza, and the Nordschleife. All, all the versions, all shorter versions of the case of Daytona. That is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I will be seeing you guys hopefully next time. Subscribe if you are on YouTube. And thank you so much.